Live. And uh, alongside me is that Christine Evans from The Sound of Magic. Christine, tell me a little bit about you, who you are. What is The Sound of Magic? Absolutely. Uh, so I'm a musician and a singer-songwriter. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Canada, actually, and from a very young age, I always loved music and I loved singing. I remember when I was young, six or seven, sitting down at the piano and writing my first song. Mm -hmm. And so after that, with the support of my parents, I got to write and record my first album when I was 13 oh and gosh. then tour around Canada. Um, I got to write lots more music um, with amazing writers in Canada as well as in Nashville. Um, and now I've come to California and settled in the Bay Area, as you mentioned. So seven years old, you you picked up your first pen to, to write your first song? Yes. Is that, that That's incredible. At the encouragement of anybody or just because you wanted to? Both, for wow. sure. I My parents always loved music. There was always music in our house. Um, but I just remember, I always just loved to create stories from nothing. It was just something that I loved to do in my spare time. And so I would sit down at the piano and just imagine how I could tell different stories and put some music to them. My goodness. Well, that's great. And so you mentioned that uh, you, you toured over Canada. And so it sounds like you found yourself some success uh, in the great white north. Uh, yeah. Martin Short Country, as we like to refer to it. Uh, so that's fantastic. So so in Canada, uh, what sort of music were you involved in? Like what, what was your genre? My genre was a pop and singer songwriter. Nice. Um, so I would write all of my own music. It was really important to me that I think that I wasn't just singing any music, but it was really music that was coming from my heart. Mm. And so with The Sound of Magic, um, my most recent project, um, I was traveling this summer and one of my goals when I was traveling was to um, really refocus on my songwriting craft. And I was trying to find new ways to um, write different types of music. Mm -hmm. And so I had this idea where, you know, what if I could write songs that were inspired by different Disney films and different Disney characters kind of taking a different look at some of those stories that I know and love so well but looking for um, moments where maybe there is an opportunity for a song to really lift up or represent that moment that um, doesn't yet exist. Wow, so that's an interesting process right there, I bet. Uh, to, to be inspired by a movie, which many people are when it comes to Disney films. Most people are inspired uh, by Disney films, I think. You know, there's a, a certain uh, uh, dream is a wish your heart makes uh, vibe Absolutely. to most films that, that come out of the, the Disney um, uh, film vaults, you know, the, the Disney film genre. And so knowing that you come from this background and knowing that now you're sort of investing yourself with the sound of magic, uh, um, what's that process look like? Like, w w how do you pick the which film inspires what? Do you just go about watching these films and go, you know what, I'm feeling something here, or or is it a you know you look at a, a, a library of Disney films and go, I can see a song coming out of this. Like, how what's your process like? Yeah, sometimes it's a little bit of both. I've seen lots of Disney films because <laughs> I'm a big Disney fan. Um, so. For example, um, one of my favorite uh, films is the recent live action version of Cinderella yeah. with Lily James. So great. And, uh, but there's actually not a lot of vocal driven music sure. in that film. Mm -hmm. And so um, there's a particular moment in that movie that really moved me where um, Ella, when she's younger, she's with her mother and her mother is passing away. Mm. And I love that moment and I imagined, you know, what if there was a song that really um, represented the emotion of that moment and the guidance that her mother was trying to give her and that Ella could then keep that song in her heart, you know, as she went through the trials of life ahead. And so that's kind of how I think about um, coming up with some of those ideas. And one of my absolute favorite live action remakes, too. Uh, so there's good. something very simple about that movie mm -hmm. that I think because it's not overblown with special effects and extra magic. I mean, even towards, if you haven't seen it, I'm not going to ruin anything for you, but even towards the end where more magic starts to appear, 
it's not overbearing. It's a very simple story, mm -hmm. um, kept in very simple terms, and it comes off so elegantly and, and just so beautiful. I can see Absolutely. how a, a movie like that would inspire you. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So on top of that, how does a song of yours go from idea to recorded product? Because your, uh, your videos that you have uh, where you, know, you, you sing these songs for the world to hear um, are very powerful, and you can feel your passion in them, uh, from idea to recorded. What's that process like? Yeah, so um, ultimately I put all of my songs on YouTube mm -hmm. and the process from coming up with the song and then recording it can be anywhere from one to two weeks, um, which is definitely a pretty accelerated timeline yeah. in terms of producing music. Um, but I'll start with you know thinking about a story that um, I'm interested in writing about or a moment and I'll start with the music. So often I find I am uh, most creative when I'm going for a walk and so I'll go for a walk and I'll start singing some melodies in my head. I'll start, I'll start to think about the theme that goes with that melodies and I'll get home, I'll open up my notebook and I'll work out the lyrics and then I'll arrange and produce all the music that goes with that. That usually takes about a day or two. Um, then I'll record the vocals in another day. Um, and then after that, uh, figuring out how that can be translated into video. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it'll just be like a simple uh, piano shot or sometimes I'll think about, oh, what could be like a backdrop or a scene um, outdoors, maybe in a forest or um, at the beach that can really represent that scene well. And then edit the video and get it online. I mean, that is an accelerated <laughs> process, I think, for original content, original songwriting, too. Uh, incredible I, from, from the sounds of it. And you sort of vow to do this on your channel two times a month, it looks like. Yes. That's incredible. I mean, that, that just sounds to me like that, that just, it almost seems overwhelming uh, to have that constant pressure of like, oh, I gotta produce this, I gotta get this out. I have, I have to create something original from my own mind um, and it has to be good. You know, like I think that, that's the other piece, like, and it probably should be good, yeah. right? No, it's definitely a bit of pressure, but I think I wanted to put a little bit of that pressure on myself with this project as kind of a, a challenge to myself on what I was capable of in terms of uh, songwriting and producing new music. Well, very good. Uh, it Again, nice to have somebody with such talent here. We could all learn a thing or two probably uh, because I think we, we desperately need to know uh, how to get talent. But uh, one of my, my biggest questions for you when it comes to uh, obviously a show like this, Disney Parks, yes. right? It's a place we, <laughs> we cover from coast to coast in this broadcast. Tell me some of your favorite things. Are you, are you a Disneylander? Are you a Disney Worlder? What is your Disney Parks lifestyle like? Absolutely. So I am definitely a Disneylander. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's very my nice. park. Very nice. Um, when I go to Disneyland, I just, I love how when you go, you're just completely immersed in magic and fantasy and stories and the music that brings those stories alive. So when I go, I definitely love to go on the attractions, but I also love to just make sure that I can take the time to, mm -hmm. I think, just really experience the park and experience some of the small things like for example I always love to go to Pooh's Corner mm. and get one of those amazing candy apples you yes. know that they have there that's that's always one of my moments you know I love to walk down Main Street and go in all the little shops you know enjoy a Dole Whip in front of the castle of course. just like really uh, you know soak it all in well, very good. Do you ever uh, have a chance to get out to Disney World or uh, have you ever been to, to one of the parks and do you prefer one over another? I have been to Disney World. Mm -hmm. I love the new Pandora um, World of Avatar. Pretty spectacular. It's really spectacular. Yeah. What they did with the design and the environment and the world that they were able to create there is right. really amazing. So It is uh, one of those things that I think on paper I had concerns about because I was like, this isn't even a Disney thing. You know, like this isn't even a Disney story and, yeah. and they're creating a whole land around it. What's going to happen? And then it turned out to be so breathtaking. And I'd, I've never even seen Avatar, by the way. I'm one of those people where I haven't even seen the film. And so when I what? went, I know, yeah, calm down, Kurt. Uh, when I went and, and explored Pandora for the first time and went on those attractions, I remember thinking to myself, this is probably not going to connect. Right. This is mm -hmm. I'm probably going to miss the whole boat on this and it's not going to be for me. It, I absolutely it's one of my favorite places in all of Walt Disney World now. 
It's so beautiful. And both the rides are amazing. Um, even the river ride, yeah. right? Which is, you know, it's a, it's a subtle ride. It's right. not, there's not a lot of action, but the beauty of the world that they created there and the characters, the animatronic characters are just phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Really well, impressive. very good. Nice, uh, nice reference point there that uh, Pandora, World of Avatar. Yes, absolutely. I think a lot of people can agree on that. And a little bit later on here in the broadcast, you're going to be singing for us. Is that right? Yes. And what what do we have to look forward to? What are you going to be singing? I'm going to sing uh, a recent song that I wrote that's inspired by the latest Frozen 2 movie. Uh, it's a song about uh, the two sisters, Elsa and Anna, and their bond um, and how they really are stronger when they're together. It's called uh, Where You Go. Oh, I can't wait to. I can feel the dark You are not the same I could close my eyes But I am not afraid I know you are strong With power all your own But Elsa, can't you see You are not alone Absolutely fantastic, angelic even. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. A beautiful rendition of something that uh, obviously comes out of your mind and a, a beautiful touching story that is Frozen 2 to have something like that be created sort of in honor of such a film is really impactful and I think that uh, more often than not people don't give enough credit to individuals that you know come up with original songs based on something and your your ingenuity and creativity to come up with something like that uh, not only is impressive but I got to tell you you feel sort of your emotion put into this you feel that that power in in your voice you feel that power in your your understanding of this story tell me a little bit about this this song uh it, it seems like you're connected to these characters somehow 
I mean, that that's how it comes off. It feels like you're, you're a part of this family from Arendelle. <laughs> Tell me a little bit more about this song. I appreciate that. That's definitely the greatest compliment to a songwriter. Um, I, I just love in Frozen the connection between Anna and Elsa. I mm -hmm. think that's really what makes that story so special. And so I saw an opportunity in Frozen 2, you know, as they're about to embark on this adventure, there's this moment where, you know, Elsa says, like, this is my calling, like, I'm going on my own, but Anna says, like, no, I'm going with you, you know, I know that you have the power, and I know this is dangerous, and I don't have the powers you have, but I have a different kind of strength that I believe also protects you, and that just really moved me, and so I wanted to have a song that would really um, represent that moment and that um, emotion. Wow. Well, I mean, it captivates it perfectly. And uh, when I think about you know my own uh, musical talents, they don't exist. Uh, but I, I'm always in awe of people that not only can play an instrument really well, but then on top of it, they can bring their creativity and they can bring their natural talent of being able to sing something all together to sort of create this sort of woven gift that we just received from you. Uh, so thank you for bringing your talent, skills, and your creativity uh, to our show to be able to share that with everybody that happens to tune in to our broadcast. It means an awful lot. Thank you for having me. Oh it's been gosh. really fun. Well, tell me, where can our audience find out more about you and your music? Yes, uh, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel where um, I have new Disney inspired videos every month. It's at youtube.com slash the sound of magic. Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram um, and Twitter at um, the same handle. So Very good. Yeah. Well, what's next for the sound of magic? Do you have any, any ideas as to what's coming? <laughs> yes. So... Um, in the new year, I think I really wanted to start us with a song that was just pure joy and happiness. And so I've been working on a song inspired by the one and only Winnie the Pooh. Oh, how about so, that? Very nice. That. <laughs> uh, by the character or by a film? By the character, and there's a lot of different Winnie the Pooh films uh -huh. um, that have been created, the animation, and then there's some of the more recent live action ones. Um, but the song, it kind of um, carries that spirit of whimsy and play um, and adventure, I think, that really is encapsulated in a lot of the different Winnie the Pooh stories. Do you have a favorite film of, of the Pooh franchise? Were you able to see Christopher Robin? I was. I thought what it was special, fantastic. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah, I mean, really emotional. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, you know, don't lose your childhood is really what I got from that. Um, but do you have a favorite Pooh film or anything that uh, has inspired you over time? I think the the recent live action ones, yeah. like Christopher Robin, are my favorites. They really um, help to you know bring to light the the context and the background about you know the story and mm -hmm. who the Pooh character is and Christopher Robin. Um, and I just I love that whole idea of you know not losing your childhood, yeah. you know, and that um, imagination and play and fantasy um, is, you know, resonates with me. Well, I can't wait to see uh, and hear uh, from you next and definitely to uh, check out not only The Sound of Magic, but uh, all else that you will be uh, creating and, and weaving in and out when it comes to uh, not only your beautiful music, but uh, your raw natural talent. It means a lot uh, to have you with us and means a lot to have you join us on our, our Christmas special. Yes. Made it extra special. <laughs> yeah. So well, very good. Uh, don't you dare miss out on The Sound of Magic, you must go subscribe. You must make sure that you follow Christine Evans. She has some uh, incredible songs already out uh, and uh, some videos to go along with them that kind of support the music. So highly encourage you to check that out and uh, let that be a part of your holiday week. To all who come to this happy place, welcome.